Today we do a tree or two or three or an entire forest, however many you want to do. Um, this was a request very uh, recently from one of the subscribers asking to do a tree tutorial. You'll probably recognize the tree in front because it's one of our favorite props. We put it in like every single video we do. Um, and I've made a couple variations on it behind. And I thought uh, maybe I would show you how to do the basic tree and explain the variations in case you want to do one that's a little Zeus-like. Um, or one that's a little bit shorter, or one that's a whoops, <laughs> one that's a little smaller. Um, yeah, so I think we'll just jump right into it. I'll show you the supplies you need, and uh, let's get going. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the stuff you're going to need in order to crochet a tree. Uh, you're going to need a tree color of yarn, and I would like to recommend a yarn that's kind of chunky, or oddly spun. And the reason I say that is because this tree was made using, uh, this is a called Pallets Collection, and I don't even know if you can get it anymore, um, but it's oddly spun, so it's not even. It, it, um, some there's fat bits and there's skinny bits, and the nice thing about that is that it makes for a kind of an organic looking tree, or something that's a little more natural as opposed to something like, let's say, this that's smooth, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that decorated would look really cute as a little Christmas tree. Um, but I just kind of like the, the sort of the organic look. So I would recommend some kind of chunky, fluffy yarn. Um, then you're gonna need a color for the trunk. Any kind of brown would do. Um, I've even done some where there's, where is it, this one I think. There's two tones to it. So I, I literally started with a scrap of brown, I ran out, I picked up another one. And as far as I'm concerned, that looks kind of natural too. So uh, this is another great scrap project and you'll notice I love doing those. To stuff it, you're gonna need some standard stuffing for the tree part. And I recommend beans for the trunk because that'll give it a little bit of weight and will make it sort of sit up whenever you wanna plunk it down somewhere. I'm using a slightly larger hook uh, than I normally do. It's a 5.5 millimeter. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the American sizing for that is, uh, but it's bigger than a G6. And it's um, just because I'm using a slightly bulkier yarn, I need to use a slightly larger hook. And you need your scissors and you need your yarn needle. And that's probably it. If I forget anything, I'll make mention of it in the comments below. Anyway, let's leap right in. So the tree, the tree is built in two pieces. We start with the green conical shaped part and we start at the very bottom and we're gonna work our way to the top. So like a lot of the projects I like to do, this starts with a cinch circle and we do that by creating a, a loop around our fingers. You take your hook you go through your loop, grab your yarn and pull it back, wrap your yarn around your hook and pull it through that little hole. And that secures your loop and that's the circle that you're gonna do your work into. Okay, so we're gonna put six single crochets into our magic circle. And as you know, that's, you go through the hole, grab your yarn, you have two loops on your hook, wrap your yarn around your hook, pull it through both, that's a single crochet. You're gonna go ahead and put six of those into the ring. So there's two, three, I'm gonna cinch up my circle a bit, four, five, and six. Now this is a bit trickier to see because I'm using this slightly squishy yarn. After the six single crochets are put in the circle, you're going to continue working in the round. We're going to increase from six to 12. So we're doubling the number of stitches, which means we're going to put two single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Here we go. One and two. Three and four. Ah, that's better. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now when you're working with this big chunky yarn, remember to kind of take your time go slowly because it doesn't look the same way uh, as working with a, a, a sort of a, a solid or a consistently spun yarn looks. Your stitches are going to be different sizes. Uh, they're going to blend in maybe with the stitches in the previous rows. So just take your time. Don't, don't stress out and try not to split your wool because when you split your wool, you, um, if you're a knitter, you'll realize that sometimes you, you end up with extra stitches or um, it just kind of looks messy and you might end up leaving little bits out. So just take your time when you're working with fluffy stuff. So we've done uh, a, a foundation row of six. We've now put on a second row, which is 12 stitches, and we're gonna move from 12 to 18. So that's two single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in the next, and then two, one, two, one, all the way around. So here we go. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, oops, there I go, I split, let's try that again, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, there we go. So that's 18. Now we're going to do another row of increase and I think since we're kind of doing this guy now this is I want to tell you something you can go from 18 to 24 and then from there you can go up if you want to make this small version or you can go 18, 24, 30 and then go up if you want to make a slightly larger tree. Um, the, the larger your base obviously uh, the, the taller and, and wider your tree is going to be. So we're going to do um, another row of increase to 24 and we're, then we're going to go up from there. But if you want to make a, a bigger one, like a, a wider or a taller one, then you want to make sure that you just keep increasing your foundation row. But the concept is roughly the same thing. So one more row of increase for this tutorial and then up we go. So from 18, we're going to move to 24 and that's two stitches in the next stitch, a single, and a single. Two single crochets, a single, and a single, and all the way around. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, now for this tutorial, that's as wide as I'm going to make the bottom. But if you wanted to go ahead and make it a little bit wider, you could go to from 24 to 30, which is another increase of six stitches, and that pattern would be two single crochets, a single, a single, a single, 
two, a single, a single, a single. Obviously that bass line is five, five increased by six is 30, and you get the point. So we're going to just go up from here, but if you wanted to pause and make it a little bit bigger, go ahead. So once you finish your final row of increase, you're going to chain one, and you're going to <laughs> look at your, your base uh, with the right side down for a moment, just so you can identify that you're going to move upwards. Instead of working into the actual stitch, so this is the actual stitch, instead of doing that, we're going to work around the post, which is this, of the row before. Now this takes a little getting used to. That's the reason we, we chained one. It's just so we've got a bit of maneuverability here. So in st so as you can see, the post is the actual stitch from, from the row before, and it's the thing in between the stitches that you usually work on. So you do that by going down and then back up, and that gives you your post. And you can hold your work any way that you like that makes it comfortable. And we're just going to single crochet all the way around around those posts so you just continue to single crochet but you go through the posts of the previous row and there's a reason for this not only does it take the stitches the tops of the stitches from the previous row and flip it on its side it creates a flat base and as you can see a row of stitches that propels you upward so try to keep your stitches nice and loose um, it's the it, there's a tendency to kind of tighten up when you you do these uh, posts single crochets and try not to miss any of your posts all the way around so just take your time make sure you catch every post and however many stitches your final row of increase was, so in this case our final row was 24, you should have 24 single crochets all the way around, no fewer, no more, because you've got 24 posts, because you have 24 stitches from the previous row. So just take your time and get all the way around. I say it's a little bit different. Helps to sort of see it in a tutorial. Uh, the first time I did this, I read it in a pattern book, and I was trying to figure out what on earth they meant by the post of the previous stitch. <laughs> but it turns out this is what they meant. Nice and loose. Try to keep those stitches loose. You don't want to tighten up because you don't want to create too much of a of a conical or a concave bowing effect on the bottom of your tree. But even if it does do that a little, don't worry, because we're going to stuff it and, and take care of that later. So I'm just nearing the end of my post stitch row. And once you get back round, you've got to identify. Now with this chunky yarn, once again, it's a bit weird, but that's the other reason that we chained one to start. So you see, I'm, I'm nearing the end. Here's my chain one. It causes a bit of a hole. I'm just going to put one more in around the post. There we go. And I'm going to skip this chain, and I'm just going to start crocheting normally into each of the stitches around. And it'll flatten itself out. So still no more increasing, and we're not decreasing yet. We're going to skip this chain one. We're going to go directly into the stitch next to it. Come on, you. And we're going to continue single crocheting all the way around. And you're going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around for two rows. And if you're a speedy crocheter, go ahead and speed up.
Okay, so we're coming up on the finish of my second row here. And now, again, with the chunky yarn, it's a bit difficult to tell, but you can see this is row one, this is row two. And obviously this is where I started that row. And I'm just going to finish up. Now, because this is an organic looking shape, you don't have to be perfect. And we all know how much I love not being perfect. Um, so if you start decreasing at the wrong spot, it doesn't matter because it's going to look even more like a real tree. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about being super perfect. But if you recognize where your start point is, and most of you will be able to do that, just realize that you've done two rows of straight crochet after starting to head upwards, and now we're going to decrease. So instead of, we're at 24 around, we're going to move from 24 back down to 18, and we do that by single crocheting two together, like this, which is, you insert your hook through the first stitch and pull up a loop, insert your hook in the second stitch and pull up a loop so that you have three stitches on your hook, wrap, and go through all three. Then into the next two stitches, you're going to single crochet once. One, two, and then you're going to single crochet two together again. Then you're going to single crochet once into each of the next two. And this is the pattern you're going to repeat all the way around. So that's six stitches, decrease for seven, eight, nine, decrease for 10, 11, 12, decrease for 13, 14, 15. Decrease for 16, 17, and 18. And if you know what a decreased stitch looks like, if you look carefully, now again, with chunky yarn, it's difficult to see. The, two, the first two that I decreased, or the first two that I single crocheted together from the previous row, kind of look like they're sitting on top of each other. So I know that I've come back around to my, my beginning. I also know that because Here's where I start to, to spread up into, into next rows. That's my beginning point. Plus, I can also count all my stitches all the way around. I should have 18. Now, we're going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around for two more rows. And off we go. Okay, I'm just completing my second row of straight single crochet of 18 all the way around. And it's always a good time to sort of stop and count. So there's my beginning. So I'll just do my one final little stitch there. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So we've, we've done our decrease um, from 24 to 18. And now we're going to go from 18, pardon my little itchy nose, to 12. So we're going to single crochet two together. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet two together. Single crochet into the next stitch. And so on, all the way around. So there's a decrease for five and six. Decrease seven and eight. Decrease for nine and ten. Decrease for eleven and twelve. There we go. Now, you probably have figured out the pattern by now. Now that we've done a decrease row, we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around for two rows. Off we go. One, two, and two, and three, 
and 24. Okay, back to the beginning again. And before we decrease again, this is a good time to start putting some stuffing into your tree. Now, the few trees that I've made, um, I've noticed that it's, it's kind of a good idea to put a handful, and I literally mean a handful, of, be of beans into the tree, just to give it a little extra weight. Oops, sorry, bunny. And then stick in some regular stuffing. And uh, the extra little bit of weight just kind of, I don't know, just makes it sit a bit proper. You don't want to overstuff your tree. You just want to give it enough stuffing that it kind of keeps a tree-like shape. But let the actual crochet cone, uh, the actual pattern of the crochet, give it the tree shape. Don't overstuff it. You want it to be a little squishy. Um, and uh, and that's, that's all you want. Okay. <laughs> So, um, if you've got a little bit of stuffing in there, don't worry, you're going to put more in towards the end. We're going to do another decrease row, so we're going to go from 12 to 6, and that means we're going to double crochet two, to, two together all the way around. So there's one decrease, two decrease, Three decrease, four decrease, five, one more decrease, and six. And like every other time, we're going to single crochet all the way around twice more meaning two more rows of single crochet. So just count to 12 basically and you will have put in the right number. Two, three, 10, 11, and 12. Getting tricky because we're closing up that, that opening. Now I'm gonna put a little bit more stuffing in here. And then I'm going to just close it up. Okay, I think that's enough. Yeah. So, you can do this however you want to close it off. What I like to do is single crochet two together, single crochet two together, and Single crochet two together one last time. It's a little tricky, but you can do it. One, and come here, you two. Oh, oh, that's tricky. Almost had it. Like I say, you want to take your time with this fluffy, fluffy yarn. Come here, you. Okay. Now, because this is super fluffy, you can't, like, the hole's essentially closed, so you can just chain one and just slip stitch back through a couple of stitches. There we go. Cut yourself a little length. Fasten off. Grab your yarn needle and just fix with the weave in any of the little bits and pieces that maybe you want to round out or smooth down. Just stick that right through there. Okay, there we go. So there's the biggest, most difficult part of your tree finished. Um, looks a lot like this one. I keep knocking over that poor rabbit. Okay, now we're going to make the trunk. The trunk's really, really, really easy, comparatively speaking. So you're going to grab your trunk color, and you're going to grab your yarn hook. You're going to make another cinch circle, so make a circle around your fingers. Hook through the yarn center, grab your, your yarn wrap, and go through the hole. That secures your, your circle. 
you're going to single crochet six into that circle just like you did when you started the tree. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Scissor shut. There you go. Make sure it's nice and tight because you don't want anything falling out the bottom. You're going to increase double, so from 6 to 12, so that's two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. And I'm going to work over my tail. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, you're going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches, and this is really just to even out that circle. It's the only reason I do it. There you go. You can sort of see that looks a little rounder. Like the tree, you're going to chain one and you're going to work through the posts of each of the previous stitches. So that's you come down through the stitch and go back up through the one next to it and that gives you the post. And you're just going to single crochet around each of the 12 posts from the previous row. Take your time and count because that's the easiest, quickest, most efficient way to know that you're not going to miss anything. It's four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now, you're going to skip that chain one that you did. You're going to go directly into the next stitch and you're just going to single crochet all the way around into each stitch for three rows. And uh, try to be loose, not too loose, uh, but loose enough that you don't close it in. You don't want it to be conical, you want it to be um, you want it to be sort of a, a very even cylinder all the way around. But once again, if you do, don't worry because we're going to stuff it and it'll take on the right shape. The whole tree trunk is going to be stuffed with beans. Um, it's not a very big piece. And one of the neat things about the tree trunk is that it, um, when you weight it down with the beans, it kind of assures that the tree stands on it and doesn't really move anywhere. All right. So you finish back at the beginning, count one, two, three rows, slip stitch into the next stitch, and fasten off with a longish string, maybe nine inches or so, because this is what you're going to use to sew it to the bottom of the tree. Now this is the fun part. Grab your beans. And it's always a good idea, if you're using beans, to stuff something, to do it on the floor, so if they go rolling off, they don't roll too far. And stuff it as full as you can, without stretching it out of shape. I think that's good. Okay. Then, a little bit of circus act here, you grab your tree, you sort of figure out where your center is, line it up on the bottom, flip it upside down, and hold it there <laughs> while you thread your yarn tail through your yarn needle 
And holding your trunk in place, careful not to let any of the beans slip out, just sew it to the tree. And this is another little process where you can take your time, keep looking at it, making sure you have it. Oops, oops, don't you dare. Get back in there. That is going to happen. <laughs> If your beans fall out, take a moment to stuff them all back in. Oops. You stay. Stay in there. You want to keep a little bit of pressure on your trunk, just so, unlike me, your beans don't go spilling out all over the floor. But, like I say, it's good to work on the floor just in case that happens. Because then you don't have to go chasing after the beans for too far. Okay. Oh, this is going to be pretty. You can already tell it's going to have a nice height on it. I really love this yarn. I found this, this bulky pallets yarn. Um, I in a bargain bin a few years ago, and I bought up everything they had because I just loved it. I loved the colors, I loved the, I loved the texture of it, and I've been slowly working through my stash. Okay, coming around the corner here, I've got a couple more stitches to go. One more. All right, once you're finished, you're going to knot off your work and weave in your tail and once again it's a good opportunity to um, identify any holes that you might be worried about beans slipping through and just weave that tail through those stitches and cinch those holes just gently shut not too much you don't want to pull your your trunk shape out of uh out of out of shape but you do want to to make sure that there's no little holes that beans can squeeze out. And once you've done that, there we go. So, just squish your tree. You want to Poke it, push it around till it looks like the shape you want, and voila! Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> One tree, or two, or three, or four. This is a really quick coniferous crochet tutorial. Remember to use a little bit of beans or plastic beads in the bottom of your tree, and then fill the trunk with them entirely. That gives it a nice little bit of weight. Don't overstuff your tree with stuffing. And, um, yeah, make yourself a whole forest of them, because why not? <laughs> and use chunky yarn. Chunky yarn makes it a little more organic, and I, I think that just adds to its charm. So, uh, there you go, guys. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. I love your suggestions, so if you've got any more, keep them coming. And uh, tune in soon. We've got a surprise expansion pack for one of our previous tutorials coming, which I think you guys are going to like. So uh, look for these trees in your videos to come. Make up a pile of your own, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye!